I like to mix it up as far as what engines end up on the stand every week. Of course, I know you all love the carnage, the destruction, the bent and broken engine parts, but from the comments, I can tell you also like the diversity, which is why when I get the chance to buy an engine that I've never had the chance to buy before and may never get again, I'm all over it. So today we're gonna to tear down this two liter turbo diesel out of a 2014 Chevrolet Cruze. This is an engine that is used across the entire planet. It's not just in the Chevrolet Cruze in North America, it's in Opals, it's in Vauxhalls. It's also the rarest here in North America. Most cruises here are 1.4s or 1.8 liter gasoline engines. The diesel Cruze was probably the most expensive option, which is why they sold the fewest of them. However, I haven't heard a bad thing about these engines. Now, I don't have a lot of experience with them, but everyone that I know who has owned one of these engines loves them, which is probably one of the reasons why I took so long to get my hands on one. This engine is formerly known as the LUZ. It produces 151 horsepower and over 250 foot-pounds of torque in factory trim, which makes it the most powerful engine option you could get in the years that this engine was available, which is kind of odd because in most cases, the diesel engine is not the most powerful by any stretch. But in this case, this is the most power, it's the most torque, and the best fuel economy. It's kind of a win-win-win, except they were more expensive. Now I have heard, not that anyone would ever backspace or tune any of these engines, but when these things are tuned and running properly, that they can get insane gas mileage and be quite fun to drive. Again, my experiences are all secondhand because this is the first time I've had the chance to work on one. Now I was told this engine is locked up. So I'd like to prove that. That's the first thing we're going to do is see if it turns over. And okay, maybe it just needs, I just need to push down on it. Okay, I think it's, it's the bar. It's clearly the bar. See, it, it's, it's gonna turn now. See, it turned. It's not, it's not locked up. See? It's not really good sounding, is it? Let's try it a little more. Uh, I feel like I'm gonna break the crank bolt. Let's go the other way. I, I don't know if it's a reverse thread either, so that could be a problem. You know what? Let's get the big bar. If this doesn't do it, it should have. See, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with this engine. It feels kind of rusty, to be honest with you. That would be a shame. It's blowing stuff out of where the injectors were. Boy, wouldn't that be something if this thing was just rusted up? Hey, we're throwing junk out. What is it? I don't know. But it turns all the way over. See, we fixed it. This is not the channel for destruction. It's the channel for repair. There's nothing wrong with this engine. I mean, we don't know that yet. But it turns all the way over, which means that'll come apart just fine. The next first thing I'd like to do is remove the timing cover. This may tell us a lot. I think that's all of them. Well, there's a belt there. So looking at this belt, it looks pretty good. I don't see it coming apart. I don't see any major cracks. Nothing's, nothing's unwinding. It looks good. I don't think this is anything related to do with why this engine was bad. And this may be a controversial statement, but uh, belts are better than chains. I would like to mention though that the belt has been rubbing this timing cover. And I see this for a few reasons, besides improper installation of some components. I've also seen where engines get hot and this, this cover will warp and it'll make contact with the belt. It'll be self-clearancing. I know it's really early in the teardown, but I need to get the dipstick tube out of the way. I don't anticipate a bunch of trouble here. Uh, I've been nice to these engines lately, so I'm hoping this one is nice to me. There's one bolt here. Look at that. It's gonna be, see, see? The next thing I'm going to do is remove the oil return from the block. 
Now the oil return is smashed pretty bad right here, but that's likely in shipping or handling that that happened. Look at that. That's easy. Next, we will start to unbolt the turbo and manifold. I do need to remove the oil feed before we do that. There's your EGT sensor. Pull all these little spacers off. This should slide right off. Now let's check out this turbocharger. This is a VGT turbo, which means it has different geometries, helps spool it up faster and also retain top end. It's like the best of both worlds. And this is nice and free. It doesn't, uh, doesn't bind up. It doesn't have a bunch of resistance. So I think that part works okay. And turbo spins okay. No in and out play. No jokes. Wheels do not hit the housing. There is some debris in there, but I think that's from shipping. I don't see any damage to any of the impeller fins. It all looks pretty good. I think that's a, a good buildable turbo. Since we're on the side of the engine, I'm just gonna go ahead and get this bracket removed. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the oil filter from the oil filter housing. We're just gonna set that back in there so the cap can get sold with the oil filter housing, which has some value in this engine. This should work. It kind of works. You know what I like better though? A way to hold this without using my hand. This looks like a tool. And I can cut through it and it's okay. You'd think I'd learn. But hey, this is what I wanted to achieve. It doesn't matter how you got to the finish line, right? It kind of matters. That was not good. Sorry, Brett. So this is actually not bad. I don't see a ton of shiny stuff in here. I don't see any slivers of metal. No glistening of any kind. I could be wrong, but I don't see any forbidden glitter in this filter. None at all. As much as I'd like to start on the intake manifold, there's a lot of other stuff that needs to come off. First, first thing we're gonna do here is remove what appears to be a coolant line that goes to the intake manifold. So we'll clip here, come on, do the things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, this is going swell. Oh, if I do that, that's the ticket. All right, we need blue for this, I guess. Kind of early for blue, but you know, he's awake. There we are. Now I'm just gonna start blasting bolts out until parts fall off. Well, that socket's too thick to fit in there. Well, there's another 15 that's directly behind this hose. It's great placement. It's literally, I'm gonna have to remove that hose to get on that. Just gonna give it a little, a little help there. Okay, that is really tight. That was unnecessary. Okay. So just perfect. Next, I'm gonna remove this motor mount bracket. I think I can get this off without pulling that harmonic balancer. I can't get this off without pulling that harmonic balancer. Like that was gonna do it. Here's a good look at the timing belt. It's definitely had a water pump. You can see that someone's been in here with a whiz wheel cleaning the gasket surface, my favorite way. The thing looks pretty good. A little bit of moisture sat there, but not a lot. And I think at this point, I'm going to take the belt off 
and we'll start to take this giant bracket off that has the uh, injection pump on it. Let me go ahead and get this nut loose while we're here. Ah! That didn't take very much. Does this just come off? Yeah, no. No, definitely not. Nope. Why do I keep trying? I got an idea. If you ever wanted to see how not to take a timing belt off, this would be it. There we are. That's definitely been replaced. Look how nice and new this is. Probably got a timing belt and water pump at the same time. I feel like that would have a little more resistance unless it's got like some sort of electronic clutch in it. Now we're gonna work on cleaning up the back side of the intake manifold. We'll get some of this bracket stuff out of the way. Just taking all the tens out. I think I ran out of tens. One more ten up here. Now all this stuff is pretty loose. After I get this 10 off. Look at that. It's looser. The goal is to be able to get this to come all come off in one one go. This seems totally reasonable. There, look at that. This line will come with this. Now we just have some bolts to zip out. First. Now we've got some 13s. I think I've just got this one bolt left. Last bolt. Ooh, that came out and it's still, still very on there. Oh, there we are. And we're off. So sitting on the block, I found this mangled band clamp. Someone was in here, well, we already know that. Now we're gonna get the injection pump off this gigantic bracket. Once we get the right size socket. A 12 on the GM. It's fine. So now we're gonna get my little buzzer. <laughs> I, I barely touched that. Uh, I don't want to hit, I don't want to push it out by the shaft, so let's see if this, I mean, I have a choice. It's unbolted, guys, I just, what if I just do this on the bracket a little bit? I don't want to hit the pump. I don't think that did anything. This has to come off, right? Oh well, yeah, there's a, there's a gap starting over on this side. We're getting there. Looks like it had some slack holding that thing on. So to me, this pump looks like it's been replaced before. The fact that there's paint halfway up the metering valve and the paint on everything kind of indicates that yes, this is not the original one. I have no way of verifying that, it's just, my own intuition. Okay, now I'm gonna pull this apart. Just pull the metering valve off to see if there's any metal in it. I don't suspect there will be, but I wanna know. It doesn't look terrible. So one thing I did notice is there's a little bit of rust in there. It's not a ton and I bet I could wipe it away, but it's there. Let's work on getting some of these lines out of the way if I can. All right, that's off. So the next thing I'd like to remove is this, which appears to be some sort of uh, positive crankcase ventilation component, some sort of uh, accumulator. This pops right out of the oil pan, but this has a uh, fastener that, um, it, I'll, I'll just show you. So it's not a Torx, 
It's a. It's got five, five, five ribs. Why? Of of all the fasteners you could choose, why? I don't. This is why a lot of mechanics hate engineers. I'm just gonna say that. You guys all agree. We're gonna see what we can do here. We can try some stuff. That didn't do anything. I don't have that in my shop. I, I looked. So we're just going to break this part that I would never sell anyway. And it's gonna be okay. Yep, I broke it. Oh no. Well, this hose was already broken, I think. Or did I break that too? No, I think that was already broken. So this was already a bad part. I didn't do any damage, but why, why its own fastener? I will never understand. Now we're gonna take the intake off. This is, I think this is like a, a swirl control valve. We're gonna get this connector out of the way so we can pull it with the harness. Like so. Now I'm just gonna start zipping bolts out. I think this just comes right off at this point. Oh, it's easy. Let's get a peek at these intake valves. That one looks dirty. That one, can barely tell. I mean, they don't look terrible. Oh, there's some carbon debris in there. That looks okay. Oh, yuck. That's a bunch of water and a bunch of carbon and a bunch more water. So this engine definitely had some water in it, but we don't know whether that was from being rained in or maybe it sucked in water. We don't know that yet. And here's the intake manifold. Pretty simple design. There's a swirl control. It moves this shaft, which has these little throttle plates in here that open and close. They do this for emissions and better combustion. It's actually pretty clean in here, all things considered. A lot of times these look really terrible. I mean, if you want to see a terrible one, look at the, uh, yeah, see that one doesn't look so good, but look at the uh, eco diesel that I tore down just a few weeks ago. That one was pretty rough. Also notice some engraving on the intake. Is that factory? I don't think so. Next, I'm gonna zip the cam gear. Probably should have done that before I uh, pulled the belt off. Now that's pretty interesting. So the cams come off with the, is it a, would you call it a valve cover? It's more of a cam housing than anything else. Both of these cams right inside the housing. I have no idea how they come out, but I would wager once we get this off, we'll be able to slide them out one side. Let's go to the other side of the engine. As it turns out, I think I do have this fastener. Nope. So on the back side of the engine, there's a little oil fill housing, and then that's a vacuum pump. Let's, let's get that off first. I'll just get this out of the way. While we're in the neighborhood. Vacuum pump. The oil fill, and there's there's two there's two bolts back here. I'm gonna zip those loose, but there's our there's actual cam gears here, and I bet you when you take these loose and pull this apart, those gears fall out the bottom, and you can slide the cams out of the housing. I would bet that's how that works. I have to use my thin wall socket for this. That's violent. I think bad stuff's happening. I think we'll deal with that. I really don't want to hit this again with the impact. One more time. Nope. That's going to tear some stuff up. We're just going to pretend I didn't do that. I'm going to slide that bolt back into here. See, I never messed with that at all. Good as new. All right, I have no idea what to expect here, but we must start.
Does this lift off easily? Oh yeah. It should lift off pretty easily. Oh, okay. Well, I think I did all this. I don't know. Is, is my impact strong enough to do all this? I think it is. I think I just totally wrecked this thing. That's a shame. I don't think it hurt the head. It just hurt all of the uh, valve train. Not all. Some of it's fine. Well, that was a mistake. So I'm pretty sure my impact did all this. I mean, it, I don't know. I didn't hammer on it that hard. Wow. Left little marks here, tore some teeth off of the gear. I'll show you that in a minute. That's a lot of carnage for my air impact. I just, I, I have a hard time believing that. Wow. The valve train isn't really a big loss. This stuff's not that expensive. Man, look what it did. That's insane. So yeah, I'm pretty sure my impact did this. Tore some teeth off of this thing. This one looks okay. Although that's the one that came out. I guess I don't, I don't really, yeah, that makes sense. So this, this cam should slide out of out of this, is there a some sort of keeper? Something keeps this in here. I bet it's on the back side of this. There's probably a bolt. I'm gonna leave these in here. The cams look pretty good. I don't see any damage there. But I definitely caused a bunch of damage. That's kind of a bummer. I know you guys that are familiar with these are like, what did you do that for? I don't know. It seemed like the thing to do. Rockers, not long for this world. Yeah, this is just a destruction everywhere. Get the rest of this apart here. It didn't destroy all of them, just most of them. There's still some survivors. Before I go zipping the head bolts out, we need to remove our water pump. Look at that. That is a thing of beauty. Let's see, 2017 General Motors product. This is an OEM pump. Yeah, this is nice, really nice. Looks like it's actually made by uh, Perleberg. How are you supposed to say that? It sits there in the head. Nice, simple, good water pump for the bin. Now it's time for the head bolts. These are T60s. We'll see how tight these are. In my experience, diesels can be pretty tight. This one isn't really that tight. <laughs> I shouldn't have said anything. So that might be a good indicator of a problem because that one was loose and much quieter. Let's see if this side matches. It's ear piercingly loud. Ah, these two are loose. This is why I do this with the breaker bar because with the impact, you can't always tell. That one wasn't tight either. Look at those bolts. These are serious bolts. All right, now we should be able to pull the cylinder head. Well, we have a head gasket. 
It looks okay. I think. Yeah, that looks good. I don't see any signs that this is blown or has any problems. I don't really see any uh, problems except for the fact that there's a ton of rust in here. So the good news is that uh, I don't believe the valves hit the pistons when I made my mistake. Which is kind of odd. That's really odd, to be honest with you. There'd be fresh impact marks, and there, there isn't. And those two are at the top of the board. I can't remember where all the broken ones are. There's definitely a lot of rust. I don't see any holes in any of the pistons. A ton of rust in this one. That's definitely why this engine was quote-unquote locked up. I think at this point, we're going to uh, turn the crankshaft over and see, make sure that all these go to the top of their bore. So two and three seem to be at top dead center. Let's get to one and four. Okay, so that's at the top of their bore. I don't hear anything loose in there. Two and three are definitely a lot of work to get to the top, but I don't, I don't see any signs that there'd be a bent rod, except actually, something sounds unhappy in there. We need to do our test. All right, here we go. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, the, I'm undecided at this point. So the cylinder head, again, if, if those valves made contact with the piston, you'd be able to tell. And there really isn't any signs of that. I don't see any burnt valves, any damaged valves. You don't see any cracks in the cylinder head. Although it's really dirty and it'd be hard to tell. Lots of rust in there. Cooling system looks kind of plugged up on that cylinder. The rest of this looks okay. I don't think this one's ever been off. Now, I don't believe there's gonna be a bunch of engine sauce in this thing, but I've got a pan underneath it just in case. I don't know that we've ever had a totally dry engine. But I think eh, it's leaking a couple, couple drops, nothing wild. So the fasteners that hold the oil pan to the block are bribe sockets. They're an R10. We haven't had that on the channel before. I'm noticing a trend of sticky fasteners. Sounds like these have been off before. And there's some missing, so yes, I believe this oil pan has been off. Maybe not. Blue. Oh, for sure it's been off. Uh-oh. There's loose stuff in here. No, it actually looks really nice. Yeah, there should be a pickup, I think. Yeah, there's a pickup missing. Nope, there isn't a pickup missing. The bottom of the pan has a piece that seals against this O-ring. Now we're going to remove this windage tray. You want to call it that? Hmm. There's a pin in here. Is that a center pin for one of the rollers? It is. But how did it get through the head? Will this fit through oil passages? Yeah. That must have been what happened. I don't know though. There's a lot of silver paste in here. I didn't cause that. I, I am so confused. Did I sabotage this teardown? That's uh, let's pull this pickup out of here. That might tell us some more clues. Well, there's nothing dirty in the pickup. 
nothing stored in there, but there is quite a bit of metally paste in there. That is not native to the oil. So in the pan, we've got some small needle bearings and a lot of silvery sludge. It's not everywhere in the pan, it's just in most places. I think those needle bearings came from one of those rockers. Now maybe they were partially damaged and the impact just finished the job. Next, I'm gonna try to get this big crank pulley bolt out. This could be right hand drive too, or right hand thread, right hand drive. There we are. Left hand thread. I don't know what I'm talking about. Now for the oil pump. I think that's all. Oil pump is off. All right, let's take this oil pump apart. Let's not take this oil pump apart. I don't know what I just did there. I'm using a number three bit. Sorry guys, that is not happening. I can turn it, it feels okay. I really don't know uh, how to get those out. They're probably Loctited in. All right, now we're gonna crack all the rod caps loose. Next, I'm going to unbolt the main caps. And this has a rear main plate that's still very present. It'll probably come up with the crank. That was easy. Let's see how hard it is to get these out. It's a pretty good sized ridge up there. Wow, that's kind of cool. All right, so that was the least rusty bore. <laughs> uh, it's fine. Let's get some stuff sprayed in there to make it a little easier. And I'm gonna use this to kind of break down some of this rust a little bit. This will probably make it at least 14 times easier. really could use a ridge reamer that would do the most amount of productive things for me right here but it'll be fine Let's see if we can get it the rest of the way oh yeah we're making it there's first ring I think this won't come out That one was easy. We just have the one. And it's really giving us a fight here. Well, we're past the first ring. We're out. Well, let's start at the rod bearings. And I think this is the source 
of the silvery paste we found in the pan. This is some pretty heavy wear, which is probably indicative of a higher mileage engine more than anything. The bottom shell is mint. Top shell sees all the force from the combustion. And that's in every on every upper shell. But nothing's torn up. Which explains why the filter wasn't loaded up with this stuff. Because if this was something that was happening all at one time, that filter would have been loaded with metal. Main bearing shells, a little bit of wear, but these look really good. The rods and pistons, they actually look pretty good. The, the rust definitely has the ring stuck in the ring lands, but they'll free up. Most of them are already free as soon as you touch them. I didn't see any cracks or damage to any of these pistons. I checked them pretty thoroughly. I didn't see any signs that the valves made contact with the pistons. Those are natural valve release. I did not create those. The engine did not create those. Unlike the LM2 we tore down. The crankshaft is perfect which is great because I think this part does have some value out of this engine. I didn't see any damage to any of the journals or any other part of the crankshaft. And the bores have some very apparent rust stains. I mean, this engine was totally locked up when we got it and the place I got it from told me it was locked up. But aside from the water damage and the corrosion, I don't really see any other bad signs. I mean, there's a little bit of rust in the uh, cooling system, but it's not terrible. And I looked at the head over a little more thoroughly, and I don't think there's any damage done to what I did. Uh, all I did was destroy all of the rockers, which, you know, if you got it this far apart, it's probably a good idea just to replace it with new. I just wish I had known that prior to. Well guys, I, I don't know. I don't have conclusive evidence to point at one failure of this engine as to why it was replaced. I can tell you the place I bought it from told me it was locked up and I assumed it would be bearing or timing related. In this case, it sat outside without injectors or glow plugs and water collected in the cylinders and it rusted it up solid. The place I bought it from doesn't have the engine stand I have. It has brakes on it and they don't have huge breaker bars like I do. I was able to get it to turn over and once it broke free, it was pretty easy to get it to turn over, which made it a lot easier to take it apart. And then I emulated a 2.4 liter Ecotec and destroyed all of the roller rockers. That's what those engines do. I just wanted to show you how I could do it too. In, in being serious, I made a mistake. I like to show you guys the mistakes I make just as much as I like to show you the things that I know I can do correctly. And in this case, this isn't something I will replicate, but I did break some roller rockers. Thankfully, those are all inexpensive, easily bought, and parts that you should replace anytime you have that cam housing off. And I didn't see any other damage besides one cam gear. Again, not a super expensive component. I didn't really shoot myself in the wallet in this case. Once we got it torn a little further down, we saw that the rod bearings had some wear. The, the wear doesn't really indicate that something was coming apart or it was starved of oil or had dirty oil. It indicates that it's either a higher mileage engine or perhaps it was tuned. No one would ever do that in North America. Nope, never. It could have been tuned. It could have been tuned and high mileage. We don't really know, but I didn't see anything else wrong, nothing. And this engine has a lot of really good parts. Uh, there's not a lot of this stuff out there, so I hope I can sell some of this to go back into service. But if you'd like to buy anything out of this engine, either for your diesel cruise or for your desk, or if you'd like to buy anything off of anything else I've torn down in the past, you can go to importapart.com and peruse our inventory. I've been uploading our parts cars every single week. If you don't see what you're looking for, you can shoot us an email, which I'll leave in the video description. I really hope you enjoyed this teardown as always. I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.